Howdy folks, and welcome back to World of Tanks with the Mighty Jingles, and today I have two replays for you, they both kind of start off a bit, eh, but are well worth sticking with. And the first one, yes, it is an artillery replay. Hang on a minute, Jingles. I'm Manit and Bitter, I didn't come to your channel to watch scumbags ruining the game for proper tanks. Well, hang on a second, hold your horses, just cool your jets there, sunshine. I don't feature artillery replays very often because they tend to be pretty boring to watch. There's only so much interest you can generate from a top-down view of somebody clicking the left mouse button every 30 seconds. Generally speaking, in order for an artillery replay to be even slightly interesting, something has to be going seriously wrong for the artillery player, whether that's his own fault, or his team's fault, or the enemy team's fault, and pretty much all of those things are going to happen in this particular battle. Beginning with his team's fault. Observe the lemmings in their natural environment. I mean, would you look at that? <laughs> That's 11 tanks out of 15, have all headed south and west. And in true lemming fashion, all 11 of them spot three, count them, three whole enemy tanks, immediately poop their pearly pink panties, and go full-on hands to camping stations. Which is incredibly bad news if you're the M43 or the Cromwell, over on the other end of the map, because they've got half of the enemy team to deal with. Meanwhile, Jack Boo here in the M43 has taken a blind shot at that immobilised VK, and it looks like it hit. Didn't see an explosion, which indicates that he did hit the target. Don't know how much damage he did to him, but it was a definite hit. Over on the eastern flank, yep, Jack is paying attention. The M43 is down, the Cromwell is doing the best that he can to slow down the oncoming onslaught of enemy tanks all heading north up the eastern end of the map. Jack's not hanging around to be next. Meanwhile, the AMX 105, the one of the other two artillery on the team, is just sitting there. <laughs> <He's>, uh, <laughs> Jack's pinging him, he's saying, follow me, get the hell out of there, but no, completely oblivious to everything other than what's going on in his top-down view. There goes the Cromwell, unfortunately. Jack's aiming up at the 3001 p he's not quick enough to save the Cromwell. The Nassorm, who has come over to help defend this plank, puts a shot into him, and Jack gets the killing blow. Meanwhile, the AMX-105 looks like he's finally put his crack pipe down and realised, oh yeah, there's nothing between me and all of these enemy tanks, perhaps I should start moving, or I'm going to be next. And with no further targets for the moment spotted over to the east, Jack switches his fire to the south to see exactly what the holdup is with the Lemming train. And that's pretty much when the inevitable, although still highly unwelcome, T-34 pops up, approaching from the other side of the map. The Nassau on the hilltop over there attempts to take a shot at him. And the AMX-105, who is on the same side of the tracks as the T-34, as if he couldn't predict that there might be some enemy tanks coming from that direction, also misses a shot at the T-34. The T-34 has, of course, spotted the AMX. While Jack takes a shot and misses, the enemy Hubble takes out the AMX. Now, Jack does not have Sixth Sense on this machine, and yet I'm pretty sure that that T-34 is not actually aware that he's here. He knows the Nassorn's there, and he's closing in to do his best to finish him off. Now, remember the Hubble has just fired. The Nassorn puts one into the T-34. T-34 returns fire, sets the Nassorn on fire, and that's when Jack pops out, auto-aim, surprise, it's me! <laughs> and, uh, keeps moving, of course, because, yep, artillery had reloaded, and the Hubble finishes off the Nassorn. And Jack's very sad about that. He's there in chat. No, not my Nassorn. Don't worry, I'll avenge you. Doesn't hang around to commiserate with them, of course, because, well, the Hummel's not the only artillery on the enemy team. Although he's probably the only artillery that has the range to hit anything over at this end of the map. Meanwhile, the Lemming train are all dying one by one. I'm not quite sure what they're all still doing down there with the enemy AMX-105 and M37 shelling them incessantly since the start of the game, because I'm sure I read somewhere that artillery prevents camping, so... Anyway, answers on the postcard. Your guess is as good as mine. With the rest of the team stalled behind a rock, it's down to Jack and the Bishop to finish off this very unfortunate Stug who was caught in the open, and Jack gets himself another blind fire kill. Meanwhile, there is only one actual tank left on the team, the T-150. The three surviving enemy artillery are doing their very best to prevent him from camping, but he's basically had enough. He's got a bare fraction of health remaining, and he's now just become one with the rock. So, while the T-150 is going all zen, it's down to the artillery to go scouting for the heavy tank. <laughs> you 
You couldn't make this shit up if you tried. So, the bishop, who's had a decent game so far, and uh, Jack here in the M44, are going looking for the enemy artillery, and Jack is going to find one of them. And this is going to be quite amusing, because the AMX-105 on the enemy team is attempting to sneak a capture of the base. Jack auto-aims, fires, misses, but the splash damage shaves off most of the AMX's health and blows his tracks off. But with the other two artillery definitely aiming at this position, Jack does not have time to wait to reload. So he does it the old-fashioned way, rams the AMX-105 to death, and then obviously keeps motoring, because you can guarantee that the M37 at least is going to be aiming in this direction. Not the Hummel, although, well, possibly, but the Hummel has just prevented the T-150 from camping to death. <laughs> and so, oh, and there's the shot. That must have been the M37. He went for the Bishop. So, two artillery versus two artillery. M44 and Bishop versus Hummel and M37. Perhaps realising that they're up for a Brothers in Arms medal here, if the Bishop can get one more kill and survive, the Bishop sends Jack a platoon invitation. And while Jack's pondering it, the M37 fires, reveals his position, slaps a shot into the bishop, immobilising him as Jack attempts to finish the M37 off. But that's all the invitation that the Hummel needed, and he's finished off the bishop, so now Jack is alone against the M37 and the Hummel. That M37 was motoring down off that hill, however, and yep, there he is. Jack got around, managed to spot him, he's not quite loaded yet, however. Did Jack get spotted in return? because that Hummel's going to be reloading soon as well. Doesn't really have a clear shot at the M37, and it's not worth the risk just sitting there waiting for the Hummel to take the shot if he did get spotted, so he sets off in hot pursuit. And this is the thing about the M44. I mean, Bert the Avenger, the FE305, gets a lot of press because, you know, rightfully so, it's a great little machine. But the M44 isn't that much different. Look at this little bugger go. The M37 keeps motoring until he gets in a cover around the side of that rock, and Jack is still spotted, and yep, there's the shot from the Hummel. But the M37 is definitely loaded, and he's had all the time in the world to turn around and get ready for Jack to come around this rock, and yet somehow he still manages to screw it up. <laughs> now the M44 and the Hummel are both tier 6 artillery, and while the Hummel does do slightly more damage per shot, it's got a slower reload and rate of fire, but it's not that much slower. And he should have been reloaded by now, and yet he hasn't taken the shot. Which must mean that wherever he is, he couldn't take the shot, which means he's probably no longer camping on the hills at the back there, and yep, there he is, he moved down in order to try to chase Jack down. Jack keeps moving, takes a speculative shot in the Hummel's general direction with auto-aim, probably wasn't really expecting it to hit, although it would have been nice if it had, and instead keeps moving and keeps the Hummel turning, denying the Hummel the opportunity to actually sit and aim at him. And the Hummel obviously wants to make sure of this shot, so he comes out and starts chasing him. And that's not the biggest rock in the world, but it's just about big enough <laughs> as these two artillery play chasey chasey. Oh, hang on. Jack misses. The Hummel misses. <laughs> Plot twist. Who's got the faster reload? It's Jack, but only just. He does not quite have the edge and mobility, however, to get around this rock and use that superior reload. And the Hummel knows that Jack has loaded, and he's not coming out to try his luck. So, once again, it settles down into a game of chasey-chasey, catchy-catchy, killy-killy <laughs> around this rock as the M44 and the Hummel attempt to get the edge. They're both loaded, they're both ready to go. Oh, the Hummel's made a critical error there. But he has a repair kit, and Jack's been here before. <laughs> if it's funny once, it's funny every time. Jack Boo there from the Wreck Clan in the M44 Tier 6 American Artillery, Bert the Avengers' transatlantic cousin. Coming up next, we have Kenny D131 on the airfield map, which isn't a map we see too often around here and he is in the Object 140 Tier 10 Soviet medium tank. Just how many Tier 10 Soviet medium tanks are there in the game anyway? I'll answer that one for you, there are five. Three regulars and two premiums. We've got the Object 140, we've got the T-62A, we've got the Object 430, and then Ward tanks, the T-22, and the Object 907. Because that's just what the world needs, isn't it? Lots more overpowered Soviet Tier 10 medium tanks. Although, having said that, the Object 140 is generally considered to be the weakest of the bunch, but, well, that's like saying Batman isn't the strongest guy in the Justice League. 
maybe he isn't as strong as Wonder Woman and Superman, but he's still Batman. This particular match on Airfield is not going to get off to a rousing start for Kenny. I mean, it looks like it's going to, but, well, just wait. <laughs> this is, of course, a highly mobile tank. It's very, very quick. And Kenny uses that mobility to get himself into a sucker position, sitting here waiting for the first enemy tank to try their luck. Over the ridge here, where all the heavies go to get shelled by artillery. And there we go. And you really have to ask yourself, how do you screw that up? <laughs> really? How do you screw that up? Oh, E75 coming over. And Kenny's taking an awful risk here, because you know artillery are going to be aiming over here, just waiting to shoot up all those big, fat, juicy tier 10 heavies. E75 seems completely oblivious to the fact that, well, Kenny was sitting there waiting, and he does get it right the second time. But Kenny's luck is... Yeah, he's just missed the bat chat. And the bat chat is now... I mean, look at that target. The bat chat's now just sitting there, side onto him, completely immobile, waiting to get shot again. Everybody else manages to hit him, <laughs> but Kenny manages to miss not once, but twice. Not, I'm sure you'll agree, the most auspicious of starts for poor old Kenny here in the Object 140 on airfield. And things are going to get a lot worse before they get any better. Here they come. All the heavies are busy having their own little party on the corner there. And of course that does mean that artillery on both teams are rubbing their hands together in glee and om nom nomming at the thought of giving all of those tier 10 heavies a good solid dose of camping prevention. Although first of course they have to take out the T25 pilots on both teams because, well, suffer ye not a tier 8 to live in a tier 10 match. Meanwhile, Kenny, he's still determined that he's going to get some trade sitting here in this bush waiting for, well, something like that bat chat to take a chance across the middle of the map once again. But nobody on the enemy team seems to want to oblige him. It's been a while since he actually fired the gun at anything and he can't really get many shots in over there because it's just too crowded. And that's when he gets another shot at the bat chat and this time he hits the bat chat's gun. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and he got spotted. But the bat chat appears to have stopped to return fire. Kenny risks a blind shot, and he does actually hit the bat chat, just in time for the uh, Type 4 Heavy there to finish him off. Perhaps Kenny's luck has changed as he stops to aim up at the T-50, and nope. <laughs> Although, to be fair, he does bounce one return shot and avoid a second return shot. Kenny, 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 you're in a top-tier medium tank on airfield. Can you start killing things, please, before the enemy team runs out of tier 8s to feast on? All right, he says. Challenge accepted. Checks around behind him again, just in case, because, well, you know, he's been here all day. And, oh, hang on a second, there's a tier 8 nobody's killed yet. So we'll make a start on him. And that's when the Jaegeru comes around the corner. Now, you might be thinking that Kenny's taking an awful chance here, but don't worry, he's quite safe from the Jagdpanzer E100, as long as there's a T-34 over there for him to shoot at instead. And for a couple of seconds, it's just a really bad time to be in a Tier 8 in this match, as artillery finishes off a KV-5, a Jagdpanzer E-100 finishes off a Defender, and then momentarily, the Tier 8 start to bite back, as an IS-3 finishes off a T-50, and then, as if they didn't have enough problems already, the Tier 8 start to fight amongst themselves as the T-34 finishes off the IS-3. And holy shit, Kenny's finally found somebody coming across the middle of the map. And that was a real bad time for that guy to be reloading. Kenny doesn't have time to start victory celebrations, however, as things over to his immediate left not looking too good. IS-3 and E-75 are the only two things left alive over there and they don't have a lot of health remaining. The Jagdpanzer E-100 is falling back heavily damaged. Enemy artillery have almost run out of tier 8s to shoot at, and so they've got no option but to start shooting at other tanks. And so Kenny goes for it. First, the E-75. His first shot damages him and blows his tracks off, and thanks to the wreck of this Skoda T-50 up here, he's got this E-75 exactly where he wants him. It's not the ideal situation, because, well, he's a Soviet medium, he doesn't have particularly good gun depression, but the good thing about the Object 140 is that it does have the best gun depression of the Soviet tier 10 mediums. T-34 next. T-34 definitely has the gun depression to make this work as he blows his tracks off, but the T-34 fires and bounces into the reverse angled upper glacis of the Object 140, and that is never going to penetrate. And so Kenny gets his next kill. Now, Kenny does not immediately follow up on the Object 252U, the Ferdinand and the Jagdpanzer E-100 that are over there. He's looking at the map, 
and he can see that the SU-101 and the Type 4 Heavy are both making a run for the enemy base, and there is nothing standing between those three enemy tanks and tank destroyers and his own base and artillery. The FV-207 over there is attempting to make a run for it. He's seen the writing on the wall, he knows exactly what's about to happen. And so Kenny's heading back to attempt to defend the base and give the SU-101 and the Type 4 Heavy the time that they need to cap. Except they're not actually capping, they're hunting the enemy artillery, and the SU-101 has found himself a Rheimatal Borsig as well as one of the enemy artillery, and that's going to be very, very bad news for the SU-101. Meanwhile, the 212A stands his ground, shotguns the Gorilla 15, is unlucky not to kill him, but leaves him on low enough health that Kenny can one-shot him. So, of course, Kenny gets a low damage roll, and then plot twist, sets him on fire, and kills him anyway. That just leaves the 252U. Now, the Object 140 does have a strong turret, but it should come as no surprise whatsoever that a 252U in a Tier 10 game has loaded the skill, is firing APCR, and has 265mm of penetration. What he also has, however, is a very, very slow reload, so he was never going to get more than one shot off there. And there's the Ferdinand, and he stopped to farm a kill on the FV-207, but the FV-207 is also defending himself, and while the Ferdinand is going to get the artillery kill, that's the last kill he's going to get in this game base successfully defended. Meanwhile, as predicted, the SU-101, in his haste to track down and kill the enemy artillery, got himself bitch-slapped to death by that Rheimatal Borsig. Kenny, expecting the Jaegeru to be coming around the corner at any second, is not taking any chances here whatsoever. And the Type 4 Heavy, denied an artillery kill, has now decided that the next best thing he can do is to cap. And with artillery almost sure to be aiming in this direction, because Kenny did get spotted, he's making absolutely certain he doesn't knock over any more scenery on his way out, as he heads over to the Type 4's position, in order to give him some support. Didn't see the Jaegeru, which probably means the Jaegeru is heading back to defend the base. No enemy tanks spotted at this point. And there's the Rheimatal Borsig. Now, he's not wanting to get hit by that Type 4 Heavy. He's not actually trying to hit him, he's just spotting him for artillery, which means there's almost guaranteed to be a cap reset. There it is. I'm just going to pause it here, by the way, just to point out something tragic. The Type 4 Heavy has 1,701 health remaining, and before the cap was reset, the Type 4 Heavy had 1,701 health remaining. <laughs> so artillery took the shot, missed him, did no damage, and still reset the cap. Because reasons. Meanwhile, be very, very quiet. Kenny's hunting Jagdpanzer E100s. And yep, there he is. First shot into the back of the fighting compartment. Jagdpanzer attempts to crest the hill. That slowed him down and made him a sit and duck. The second shot goes into the tracks, immobilizes him. Kenny puts the third shot into the same spot to ensure that he stays tracked, starts moving because artillery will be swinging the guns around. Low damage roll, typical. But he is going to get this guy. And that's a Jaeru kill. And the Lorraine 155 has been spotted. The Rheimatal Borsig's dead. Type 4 Heavy finished him off. Doesn't have to worry about him. Comes around the side looking for the shot at the Lorraine and spots himself the M53. So, positioned in a spot where the Lorraine can't hit him, he pumps one shot into the M53, but it's going to take more than one, even though he did get a good damage roll. And now it's the Lorraine. And check this out. Watch this. Now, I've seen people miss shots at Lorraine 15551s before by planting a shot right in that gap above the top of the gun and below the top of the superstructure. And that's perfectly legit, but Kenny's not fallen for that old gag, so he doesn't just snap a shot right at the centre of mass of the target. Instead, he loads the high explosive because it has 420 average damage and the Lorraine only has 390 health, and he aims for a spot where it's going to be a guaranteed kill. Or at least he thinks it's going to be a guaranteed kill, Except that point on the Lorraine, at that kind of angle, has about 53mm of effective armour. <laughs> so he doesn't kill him. The Lorraine gets to shotgun him. But, well, at least he manages to make sure of it with his second shot. Oh, Kenny, Kenny, Kenny. I, <laughs> I don't, don't think I've ever seen such a derpy ace tanker, 9 kill, Radley Walters 6,000 damage game. Uh, but it was very, very fun to watch. And I hope you guys enjoyed it too. And if you didn't, well, tough. My channel, my rules. <laughs> I upload what I want. Anyway, that's it for today, folks. I hope you enjoyed it. And as always, take care, and I'll catch you next time.